gang thing. I've been getting groovy, you can't say the same. If you don't work hard, then you finna lose. If you don't chase your dreams, then you need to move. of the 2021 Canada Summer Games, the South American West Country Game 3, as the CEBS from the Canada Cup of the Women's Game in the River Islands, and the defending CEBL champion, Saskatchewan Rattlers. They're playing their first game of the Summer Series. Jason Tom here alongside Joe Razzo, and Joe, a lot of depth the other day for the Niagara River Lions and picking up their first win, and they're going to be put to the test early on here with a change in their starting five. Yeah, Trey Bell Haynes is out, and he was their point guard and had an absolutely great game yesterday. And so they're going to be challenging that. Dorian Pinson now, who can literally play five positions for Niagara, and the key guy who understands the system because he was there last year, will take on over the, take the point over. And that's a very different lineup because Trey did a great job of getting to the middle and working from there. So it will change them a little bit, but they've got a Cassius Robertson. And I'm looking for Emmanuel Artua. Our youth sports player, Brock Student, who is, I think, going to get big minutes today. It's going to be a great game. Game number three of the CEBL Summer Series here live from St. Catharines, Ontario. We thank you for joining us on CBC. Most of our clients who come through our door and who are suffering from mental illness, they're feeling a sense of despair. and a longing for help. Often, insurance companies are denying disability claims on the basis that there's insufficient medical evidence. We've represented hundreds of clients who suffer from anxiety or depression. We fight for our clients' rights. to receive the compensation they deserve. If you've been denied long-term disability, don't give up. We can help. Your long-term disability firm, Kotak Law. Time to rep your CEBL pride, Canada. Exclusive New Era merchandise is now available on CEBL.ca. Buy your favorite hats, replica jerseys, t-shirts, hoodies, and more. Welcome to our game. Most of our clients who... three just minutes from tip off and now we're going to our crew Amy Adabert. Amy? The team's Ryan with the Niagara River Lions and Kenny with Saskatchewan. I got to talk to Kenny earlier today and of course they played together in high school. They actually recently played together in Spain professionally. This is the first game for their opponents and so I asked Kenny about that and he said Ryan sent me a good luck text earlier but I expect things to change when that ball goes up and he actually gets help he hopes that they get to guard each other but shout out especially to Elizabeth and Melvin the parents who are having giant zoom parties today to watch the big matchup my last question went completely unanswered which which shade of green 
are they wearing? Jason. Thank you, Amy. Yes, it's uh, definitely a family affair in a lot of different ways here in the CEBL. And when you're talking about the Summer Series, seven game, not a tournament. This is season number two. Top six teams will advance to the playoffs, Joe. And I mean, you have a lot of FIBA experience and all the scouting that you've done. So much goes into the health of these players over this type of setup. No question. And you're going to get situations where you're going to get surprised. And that surprise might be 24 hours, it might be an hour, it might be 20 minutes before game time because people are dealing with injuries constantly. The key part is, in the first portion of this, every win is as valuable as the last game you play. So there's no game that's more important. You carry everything over here. So what everybody wants to do is the first step is you want to accumulate enough wins that you know that you're going to be one of the six teams and then you just keep building on that all the way through. A key point there is the top two teams end up getting a bye into the semifinals while the remaining four teams that advance to the playoffs then match up to see who wins to advance to those semis. And in such a condensed series like this, getting those days off so you don't have to play that quarterfinal is a huge advantage. You're absolutely right. It, it, usually buys mean home court. Yeah. Here the advantage, the buy is going to put you in a situation where you can rest a little bit, prepare a little bit more, and not deal with the anxiety of possibly getting knocked out of the tournament. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's very different. It's, a, it's almost a mixture of the FIBA tournaments that we get used to here watching Canada basketball, along with March Madness and the single elimination when you get there. As you mentioned, every game counts with the seventh and last place team not advancing to the playoffs. So incredibly important every game, and it, it's going to be an outstanding one here today. And one of the head coaches of these teams is somebody that you know fairly well Victor Razzo your son and right now he's live with Emil on the baseline A little bit of technical difficulties there, but I would give a guess that Coach Rasso over there is talking about the depth that's going to be on display for his squad, what he's going to need to do from that point guard position. But as you had mentioned, Joe, a lot of versatility in the backcourt for this squad. Yeah, no question. This team is built on depth, and they've got a lot of it, and they've got a lot of interchangeable parts. But Saskatchewan is built to interchange. So there's going to be a lot of chess pieces being moved around. And the only thing that they that is the biggest difference is Niagara has a big man in the middle in Sam Muldrow. And when you're talking about keys to the game, Joe, some very important things coming in here. And Saskatchewan does have an advantage having been able to sit back yesterday and watch Niagara play their first game of the tournament. There's no question when you're – both these teams actually have an advantage. I think Niagara, I think Saskatchewan's advantage is the fact that they – seen them they've got a scouting report they know what they're doing and they're fresh on the other hand niagara's advantage is that we've had a chance to get our sweat out there we got our nervous energy gone early in the in the series so there are advantages both ways for this uh but the fact that you know what to expect a little bit helps as we had mentioned there is a change of the starting lineup for niagara and obviously with saskatchewan still coming out of their training camp still some bodies trying to get back into game shape and be ready to go so they're starting five for this game number one maybe a little bit different than we would see for the remainder of the tournament yeah and i think the starting five is going to be determined on how camp went and you know who's particularly healthy i don't think the starting five will be like the finishing five because i think there you're going to go to guys who maybe haven't been in camp maybe been nursing some injuries at, at the ending five you're going to have your best players on the floor Absolutely, and of course, we play with FIBA rules here, so sometimes foul trouble does become an issue. A couple of those other FIBA rules, the fact that you can take the ball off the rim, we saw that yesterday in the Elam ending time, which again, 
we are playing with a FIBA Elam ending, which is just so unique, and it was amazing to watch yesterday. And the combination of those two things coming together, we saw yesterday uh, uh, someone taking the ball off the rim off of a potential game-winning free throw, and it was something very unique that you will only see here in the Canadian Elite Basketball League. We have the River Lions taking on the Rattlers, starting five coming up soon. And oddly enough here, it's the Niagara River Lions that are the visiting team, Joe. So they're going to be on a different bench, not wearing those home whites. It will be the Saskatchewan Rattlers in the home whites with green. And is it wheat? What's the color? What's the third color of these Rattlers? Yeah, listen, you're asking the colorblind guy in the group. <laughs> Thanks for picking on me already. Hey, we have to start early. So happy to be here alongside Joe Rasso calling basketball once again. The starting five for the River Lions. We got Daniel Mullings, Cassius Robertson, as mentioned, Dorian Pinson sliding into that point guard spot for the injured Trey Bell Haynes, Guillaume Bucard, and Sam Muldrow rounding it out with the man in the middle for the River Lions. For the Rattlers, we got Kevin Bracey Davis, Denzel Taylor, the Canadian, alongside Negus Webster Cham. Kai Williams and Kemi Osei out of North Montreal, Quebec. We are about to throw it up here. Game number three, we are underway from St. Catharines. Thank you for joining us, everybody. And it's Pinson with the Rock calling out the first play of the game. Muldrow. Cassius Robertson. Bad pass. Almost picked off. River Lions get it back. Yeah, good Kept defense. On the baseline. Good defensive series by Saskatchewan to start there. It looked like Niagara was trying to run a little pick and pop and a little miscommunication. That's what you're going to get early in this series. There's some turnovers because of miscommunication. Jose running off the pick. Williams. Back rim, front rim, and out. Bucard back the other way. You will see the River Lions have a number of guys who can bring it up court, and the big man can do that as well, Joe. Yeah, that's that's Sam's. The, the last series, they were trying to get Sam on a pick and pop. Sam's a very good three-point shooter, probably a 40% shooter in his pro career from the threes. And then in defensively, he's, he can block some shots. So No good from Negus Webster Chan. Today's Rattlers game par day partner is ends Toyota, proud teammate of the 2020 Saskatchewan Rattlers, the defending champs, coming down with a defensive rebound. Osei pushing it back. Daniel Mullings trying to D him up. Bracey Davis. Robertson. Real strong take and one situation there. I like the Saskatchewan team. Spacing is really important to this team because they've got five guys interchangeable. We're going to see the three-point shot, and they've taken two good-looking threes already from two different players. I think this team's going to shoot a lot of threes. I think they're going to be hard to guard because they're going to space you as much as they can. They won't be a post-presence team, but they'll post up their best matchup. Free throw is no good from Bracey Davis. Reminder, the official game ball of the CEBL is Spalding. Get your new CEBL official replica ball today by visiting cebl.ca and... Bukar takes that Spalding hard to the hole for two. And good ball movement by Niagara there, creating a closeout where, where Guillaume could take his guy straight up. Williams again, no good. Bukar pushing back the other way. Robertson finds his way into the lane. Nice finish. And, and you could see there that Sam Muldrow, because he hit a three already, you couldn't help off of Sam like you would like to. Left the lane open. Negus Webster Cham back rim and out. Bodies hitting the floor here early. The Rattlers sat back and got to watch the games yesterday, fueling themselves up for this one, I am sure. Robertson. Muldrow. Bukhart. Open on the wing. Almost had too much space, too much time. But a good look by Sam Muldrow there, who's going to get double teamed to skip it. Osei sidestep, thought better of it. Webster Chan, 14 on the shot clock. 
Yeah. Lions get it back. Well, early in the game, you want to find out how your defense is going to be against ball screens in there. And that looked like a good switch, almost like a blitz where they were double teaming. Good play by Niagara to create that turnover. The Rattlers, the defending champs, that only have three returning players. A new head coach, Chad Jacobson, was an assistant last year for this Rattlers squad from downtown. Cassius Robertson, you're going to hear the name a lot today. And again, playing through Sam Muldrow in the post to kick it out. He's not just in there to score, but he'll be there to facilitate. Rattlers still trying to get things going offensively. Webster Chan, his third attempt of the game. Cash money from downtown, the man they call the king. Yeah, nice attack baseline and got him on the drift. And he's taken three good open threes. Mullings. Had himself a great game yesterday. Kick back out. Muldrow again from downtown. He got the roll. The big man's got the touch jump. Yeah, he does. And uh, it, it's tough because you want to help off him. And, but he spaces the floor so well for this Niagara team when he's doing that. Rattler's still searching for something here. Williams, nice ball movement. Bracey Davis. Ooh, almost got away with one down low, but... The whistle goes, foul called on Muldrow. Yeah, Mul well, Sam didn't finish off the box out early. He, he allowed Denzel Taylor to get inside. And great work by Denzel Taylor there. First subs of the game. In comes Rashawn Brown at the point guard spot. Gracie Davis, who card right up in his shorts. Good defense, weak side rebound comes the way of the Rattlers. Shot clock violation. They're yeah. saying that it hit the rim. That's what the Rattlers are, <laughs> are mentioning. But Dorian Pitts says, no, 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 our ball, let's keep it going. Yeah. Once you go inside, we got to keep an eye on Sam Odro on the defensive end around the rim. He is a great shot blocker and can influence a lot of plays inside there. Mullings bumbling his way into the rim, called for the travel. Rattlers get it right back, 13 to five for the River Lions here, but just over four minutes into the opening quarter. Chan. Negus again, he's like a microwave out there, Joe. If he starts getting warmed up, you can't stop him. And you're, if you dare him, he's gonna shoot it. Oh, he yeah. just liked that matchup. He got himself in a situation where he had Muldrow on him. And instead of taking him to the basket, he settled for the three because he can knock that thing down. Oh, and Muldrow, he got called for a moving screen. I don't even think he saw it. He was there in two minutes, or sorry, two fouls in the opening five minutes for the big man. That is quite an equalizer for the Rattlers. Yeah, and a big foul because the substitution for Sam was coming, sitting at the table, waiting to get him in. I don't think he, you were absolutely right. I don't think he was trying to set the screen. I think it was just the action that two guys ran into each other. That depth's coming into play early here for the River Lions. Tyrone Watson coming into the game along with Ryan Edgem. Ooh, that was a buttery from downtown and Rashawn Brown Telling his boys, let's get going. Cutting the lead to five. That's a U Sport graduate making his first basket with a whole lot of confidence. He did not hesitate. He's a proud bison. <laughs> Interesting story there with Brown returning home after heading south of the border. One of the number of New Mexico State alumni we have actually in this, league, in this game with Daniel Mullings and Tyrone Watson on the River Lions having spent time with Dr. Paul Weir down in New Mexico. Sorry, New Mexico State. Also played with somebody else that uh, fans out there may know, Pascal Siakam. He's won a few things for the Toronto Raptors. Pinson pulls it. Lucky lefty, no good. Shane Asiende in the game. You're going to see a lot of this from Saskatchewan. They're going to bust out with the dribble to create transition. Oh, another big take by Brown. What can Brown do for you, Joe? He can score, and he did that. That's his whole career at Manitoba. He was a scoring machine. Hinson 
Oh yeah, he wanted another one after the last one just rattled out. He wanted to get another one up and got it to go. Delane Price, one of the returning Rattlers. And you can count it, plus the foul, Shane Osiande, a late addition, but somebody who obviously knows his program well, having won a championship with the Rattlers last yeah. year. And he knows the players on the team. And he knows, so he, and he's, he's a great offensive rebounder. And against this team, you're going to have to do that. You, the, Niagara, one of the things Niagara's going to have to do is get... Welcome to PayWorks. We're payroll, HR, and time and absence management experts. So whether your business has thousands of employees or just one, let us show you how we're different. We're PayWorks, and we're doing business to business, person to person. Follow the Niagara River Lions on social media right now to get the latest news, updates, and behind-the-scenes access that the River Lions have to offer. Follow the Saskatchewan Rattlers on social media right now to get the latest news, updates, and behind-the-scenes access that the defending champion Rattlers have to offer. St. Catharines, a reminder, all these great jerseys and logos that you see in the CEBL, you can find them all online. Free throw is good. The Rattlers, after struggling out of the gate, Joe, Doing a very good job here, considering this is their first game together after about eight days of training camp. Yeah, but I, I didn't think that. I did early in the game. I didn't think they were struggling. I just thought they missed a few shots because I think this is a very good shooting team right now. Three in the key called on the River Lions. We are tied at 16, 3:54 to go here in the opening quarter. Reminder: This is game one of two here today, as we have an all Western matchup coming at you. About 24 minutes after the conclusion of this one between Fraser Valley and the Edmonton Stingers. Ryan Anderson pulls down the defensive rebound. Side out of bounds will come up here. Eman Owatua is in now for, for Niagara. And he's a current Brock player. So now we've got Brown and Owatua, two U Sports players. Something that you're going to see in the CEBL. Yeah, very special to not only have the players that are available to get some pro experience while still in U Sports, but also the guys who just graduated. An opportunity for them to immediately get some pro experience and also get an opportunity to try to get that next pro job. Yep. I love the urgency Saskatchewan's playing with on defense there. That chase was full out, almost got a steal out of that. Robertson. Good defense by the Rattlers. Uatua. Pull up. No good. Delane Price of the rebound. Brown. Five quick points for the Rattlers. Brown had coming off the pine. Robinson Opong. Up top. That was nice to see go through the rim. Kevin Bracey Davis, one of the internationals here for this squad, needed to see one go through the rim. Saskatchewan's doing a good job of making Niagara chase them. They're moving the ball real well. Edgem. Jumper is good. Ryan had such a good game yesterday, even though that box score may not reflect it. Yeah, I totally agree. I thought he had a huge influence on the game. 
Price gets into the lane, drop off Osiyande is good off glass. You know, on any offense, if you can beat your man, you're going to create advantage situations, and Saskatchewan's doing a great job of that. Watson, kick out. Anderson did not have his feet under him. That was all wrist. And that's what Bracey Davis said after he hit it. He said, get out of here with that. Yeah, if you don't know Ryan Anderson, that's what you're thinking. But, man, this guy can just throw up the buckets. Price tried to drop it off again to Osiande. Officials are going to get together. They say it went off the hip of a river lion and out of bounds. So Saskatchewan's doing a great job of attacking off the dribble and creating an advantage. They're getting by their first guy. Defense starts with pressure on the ball and controlling the ball. And right now, Saskatchewan's making Niagara go to a second option. Brown fake pass, then kicks back out. Front rim did not have his legs underneath him. Did Price back the other way. River Lions pushing it. Edge him. Hop, skipping a jump for two. Yeah, good advanced ball movement there. And Edgem stepping in the gap. Not going to the three, but stepping to the gap where he was visible and got himself a layup out of it. This is all CEBL end-to-end -end action here. I hope you like it. Thank you for joining us. Webster Chan from downtown. He is going to have it going all summer series long, I think. And we talk about getting your feet set real quick and a quick release. There's Tyrone Watson, just bully ball into the rim. That's what Tyrone can do. Webster Chan calling for the screen. Osiande. Niagara switching off. Nice take, but can't finish. Uatua pushing back the other way. Ooh, almost had the English to go and the Rattlers pushing right back. Brown. Price. Go back to native Opong. Hanging. Got it to go in the lane. That was smooth. Lots of confidence in Saskatchewan guys. Taking the ball to the hoop. Getting to the middle of the floor. Card working in the post against Opong. Tough pass into the corner. Watson shoots it. And, and that's a good scouting report by Saskatchewan. They were more concerned about Guillaume inside, and they brought help and let Tyrone get the three off. Got a five second difference game clock and shot clock. River Lions may elect to try to run this one right down. Again, FIBA rules. Oh, what do I know? Just give it right back to the corner three ball. Yeah, someone missed the scum report on that one. You know when a great shooter's taking the ball out of bounds, chances are he's getting the second pass. That was easy money. Two on the clock. Rashawn Brown, welcome to the seat. What is 100 years? In 1920, Earhart Cook turned a passion for headwear into the new era cap company in Buffalo, New York. But everyone was making this kind of hat. So we came up with the big idea to make the best caps for the biggest sport. But something wasn't quite right. We wanted to show the logos with pride. And just like that, the iconic 5950 was born, changing the baseball cap forever. For the first time, the caps the pros wore on the field were officially sold in stores. And then something unique happened. Spike Lee called, THE Spike Lee, and asked to have a red Yankees cap to match his jacket. We asked Major League Baseball, and they said, we had a chance to be disruptive. Spike's red cap launched sports headwear into a wider culture. Hip hop made it a staple. Creators made it their own. Colors, fabrics, patterns, it was more than just your favorite team. And a gold sticker on the visor became as iconic as the cap itself. And those four numbers, we think it's an original production number. We don't know for sure, but we love them. From courtside to Crenshaw, from the 50 to 5th, it shouted that this is who you were, what you repped, and where you lived. The world saw it and wanted it. Where were we? 
staying true to our roots. Fans of all sports became fans of us. People liked what we were doing, so our brand grew, and we became more than just a cap. That's 100 years. We thank you. Enjoy what comes next. Welcome back. Second quarter action at the Meridian Center brought to you by Ward 1 Studios, the national video partners of the CEBL. Ward 1 has been doing some great work. All the stuff you'll be seeing on the broadcast here and on CBC. And as part of the CEBL social, social justice work, you will hear players, coaches, and staff speak out against racism because racism is not our game. And it's featured on each baseline. As a reminder of the work we all need to do for equality in Canada in every aspect. From downtown, the Rattlers are letting everybody know it doesn't matter if we have returning players or not. We're the champs until you say otherwise. A lot of Lots of threes going here, but that last series by... Saskatchewan was outstanding. They got double teamed and got out of it quickly. Three point lead for Saskatchewan right now. Hemi Ose. From the land beyond, Kemi shouting out his boys, Park X. And I am impressed with the number of guys shooting the ball for Saskatchewan. Hard to put together a scouting report when everybody's doing that. Mullings down low. Daniel Mullings just saying, nope, you can't guard me. The game within the game happens so often right now. It's Mullings and Osei, and Mullings splits it. Kick out, Bracey Davis, and no good. That was an absolutely great split by Kenny Osei on that. Good read. He saw it coming because he ran the ball screen the last time, knew what they were doing. And he, and he, so he used that as information to great, great dribble. Funny, you look at Osei and obviously a, a generation before, but you see the similarities to a Lugans Dort and they both came from the same area there in Montreal. They're just built different in North Montreal. Mullins taking it at Osei, looking for a foul call. Jose says, nope, my hands were up. Yeah. I'm impressed the fact that Saskatchewan is getting back on defense real well, controlling it, and we're actually controlling the pace of the game here. They're not giving second chance opportunities to Niagara. And with this lineup, Niagara right now, it's a pretty, it, it, putting Tyrone at the, at the point forward position right now has slowed them down a little bit. Ooh, Mullings called for the foul on the little reach around poke away. Yesterday, the CEBL was trending across Canada, Joe. I was sitting at home watching you on CBC. And you can join the conversation online by using the hashtag Our Game to join along with Joe and myself and everybody else who's worked behind the scenes here tirelessly to bring this summer series to you live and a turnover tyrone watson just causing all kinds of problems out there ball pressures the defense starts with it and being able to do that that was one of the few times where niagara's been able to control the ball and stop it straight one-on-one -on -one. Foul called on the ball. So Tyrone Watson being the point guard right now, something that he hasn't really done as much in his career, but because he's a, such a veteran, this is why you bring him out to your, he's a matchup that he can feel that you can run the show from that position with him. 
Versatility is key in a condensed series like this. Bullings, Ose, right up on him. I love this matchup right now between those two. Turnover, Edgem. Is it the younger Edgem? Is it the older Edgem? It doesn't matter, it's an Edgem. Kick out, Ose. Ooh, couldn't get it to go. Sask still up four, Edgem again. Coming up with the INT. Ose to Edgem. Tied up on the baseline by Watson going back the way of Niagara. I like, the, I like Saskatchewan's plan on the defense right now. They've got Grandy Glaze in the corner. They're, they're coming to the shooter. They know where Anderson is, and they decided, they know their personnel. They decided, okay, we're going to leave Grandy open on that last attempt. Mullings. Robertson back in the game. Mullings now deed up by Webster Chan. Those two know each other well. A couple of Scarborough natives. No surprise, one of them ended up on the floor. Webster Chan. Oh, he's got the feeling today. An Ethiopian, Anigas means king. And he's the king from downtown so far here today. Anigas with his fourth three in a row. In transition, tough three, but lots of confidence. Missed the first couple, but he has got it going. Glaze, who tried to draw the charge. Smart move from his posterior. Denzel Taylor swiped it away. He's getting props from his teammates. His socially distanced bench is feeling it over there. And they're doing a great job. Saskatchewan's done a great job of communicating on defense, and their bench is helping them. Robertson, no good. Webster Chan comes down with it. Henson was hustling. Edgem. Hands are uh, not quite there. Dribbled it out of bounds. We got a Rattlers timeout on the floor, Joe, and I mean. Well, when I was younger in high school, I was a pretty good athlete. Went to the provincial championships in most sports like volleyball, track, basketball, and of course, the goalie. But lately, I've been going up the stairs like Fred Sanford. That's why I use Inflamex. Remember, two M's, two X's. Inflamex is formulated to relieve joint pain, helps address pain and inflammation at the cellular level, and is GMO-free and allergen-free. I'm doing better with a little help from my friends at Bell Lifestyle Products. So you can do the things that you do best. Oh, yeah. A mark of legacy, a mark of our game. Spalding is the official basketball partner of the CEBL. Get your replica CEBL game ball now at CEBL.ca and take our game to your courts. With all the hype on social media, with all the hype on social media during yesterday's Summer Series doubleheader, it's time for Rattlers fans to show their support by following the green and wheat on social media. Can they be as loud online just like the River Lions fans set the tone yesterday and you be can become a River Lions insider? Sign up now on riverlions.ca and right now it's the River Lions having some trouble here with the defending champs who have come out in their first game of the summer series playing inspired basketball. Robertson gets one back for Niagara. And a tough basket. Great defense by Saskatchewan, forcing tough shots. Bracey Davis, all kinds of length with the ball. Osei now. Into the post, Denzel Taylor with a clear out on his elbow. They called him for the travel. Yeah, he got it inside and he was forceful when he made that turn. You're absolutely right, he led with the elbow, but his feet were dancing. Yeah. Yeah. 
Robertson. Osei has been logging big minutes here at the point guard spot. Robertson took him off the dribble, hanging, banging, and dropping. And that's that's just an individual scoring there because they're at, the offense isn't getting him the shot. He just created his own shot on a one-on-one -on -one situation. This is around the time in yesterday's games, Joe, that midway point of the second quarter, the heavy legs start kicking in. Guys haven't been playing at this level for months now. It'll be interesting to see if there's a difference in this game at this same juncture. Webster Chan beat the clock, but front rimmed it. And he's gonna have no problem touching it and scoring and scoring. And when that clock's running down, he didn't have to look at anybody to pass it. I just like the energy Saskatchewan, second chance opportunities on that. Went to the board, got a hand in there. Second possession. Taylor drops off Brown. Well, the only thing that cooled him off was a little spell on the bench. Brown came out three for three in the early going at seven points for Sask. Nice drop off, Webster Chan called for the foul, but laid the lumber hard enough that Edgem could not finish through the contact. And there Niagara's moving the basketball a little bit, got a situation where they can get the drive and the dish off there. Thought earlier they've been real stagnant, and when they move the basketball, they're tough to guard. Edgem at the line. As Amy mentioned off the top, a couple of Edgem brothers playing in this game. And Ryan, a great addition to this River Lions squad. Well, I want to send out a God bless Mrs. Edgem for her boys, what they've done for basketball in Canada, CCA, youth sports, NCAA, national team. Always there to answer the bell for their nation. Melvin Edgem, one of the key players for Canada basketball for a number of years. Yeah, we got a foul on Guillaume there on the drive. John Brown having a little chat with Jelaine Price there to kind of explain what he needs from him. Bracey Davis. Oh, whistle came early, but it was just drowned out. They called a foul on the floor. Yeah, and it was a little bit on that risk reward there. I thought on Guillaume Bucardigan, but I thought on that there, Niagara was trying to look for a steal early on the inbounds pass. Edgem called for the foul on the floor. That's a tough pass to throw back to Brown. Yeah, especially when you got someone like Guillaume Bucard back there who's such a good off ball defender too. Bucard. Tremendous wingspan for his size as well. Oh, there's the double. Trapped him in the corner, but got out of it. Webster Chan calling for the screen. They're getting up on him early. Had to pull it. I was not going to be surprised if that went through, but did beat the shot clock. 10 on the shot clock now. Brown, what a shiny dime, Rashawn Brown. Wow. But it's that second chance opportunity. They are just doing everything they can to get two opportunities on one possession. Look at the gang rebounding by the River Lions. That's exactly what they need to be able to stick around in this game. Yeah, I also think they need to box out and do a better job on their end re rebounding. Long boards, that's what you're gonna get with threes. You're gonna get those long boards and a lot of them are hustle boards. Both teams not shy from three-point land, that is for sure. Eight on the shot clock. Robertson creating, forced the contact, foul called on Taylor. You were talking about all the threes are taken, and teams are shooting incredible percentages. But this is the, you know, you've had minimal amount of attempts at the free throw line. And sometimes when you see that stat in the game, it's not because teams are just shooting well, it's sometimes because they're settling. There's been a lot of late shot clock attempts, that's for sure. Watson checking back in. Both teams cycling through their players again. Definitely needed in a condensed 
summer series like this. The other, to, sorry, go ahead, Joe. The other part of this series is there's no fans. You got to bring your own juice. I thought it was quiet. In yeah, here. you got to, and, and you can't tell by the Saskatchewan guys. They think it's a full house. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, quite the difference from the last game I called in the CEBL at Championship Weekend out there in Saskatoon, and what a weekend that was. Price working on Watson gets to the baseline. No good. There's been a lot of those for the Rattlers. They could be up by a lot more if they got a couple more rolls and bounces. Robertson, Edgem. Faded just a little bit on that one and came up short. Lapong, Brown. Ooh, Brown dancing on him. Rashawn Brown shouting out his boys. Oh, this is downtown Rashawn Brown. This reminds me of Freddie Brown, the old school Seattle player. <laughs> Holy smokes, this guy is confident and hot. Shouting out Kirby Shep at the University of Manitoba for Sean Brown. I know he was pumped for this CEBL season and he is not disappointing. Nice take, Tyrone Watson just doing what he does. Brown playing with such confidence out there. He pulls up again. Tried to call the, tried to draw the foul because he was uh, a couple inches off to the left. But you said he's playing with confidence. He created a situation, knew that they were switching. He wanted the, the switch before he even started that play. He's going to calm it down. He had the heat check the last time out. This time he's. Making sure they run their offense, Price. And they do a good job of swinging into a stagger on the weak side, trying to bring Brown back or a shooter back. Just creating a little bit of movement. Williams, ooh, hit one earlier. He got to the bench and had a big rest, came out and popped another. And you know what, this is an old, these are old, those are open threes. Like the worst closeout you can have is 95% of the way. If, you, if you're not gonna close out all the way, take away the shot, there's no reason to close out in the first place. Cash is no good. I think Edgem's going to get called for an over back. Edgem second. He's out. Grandy Glaze comes in. Emmanuel Uatua and Daniel Mullins checking back in as Niagara down five right now. Sask really with a great first half of basketball and head coach. Chad Jacobson in his pro debut. Couldn't ask for anything more. No, he had a great time, a great job of, of getting these guys ready for this and getting ready for the series. Price gets past Glaze and finishes with the finger roll. They find the right matchup and they start with attacking off the dribble. Latua down low. Oh, yeah. Easy call there. Good solid defense on the ball and good help off the basketball. For all the positives Tyrone Watson brings, you can scout for him pretty well. You know he's going to lay the body into you. And if you're ready, you can draw that charge. Good and, scouting. And what Tyrone can also do is he's a very good passer. So we need other guys to stay visible. They need, for Niagara, needs other guys to stay visible for him to get the ball to. When you force a guy in a situation like that and nobody else is looking to move, then it's a great time to draw the charge. Under a minute to go, the Rattlers up seven here. Game number one of two today here from the Meridian Center in St. Catharines, Ontario. Before the half, we'll check back in with Amy Otterbert, who will have an interview with one of the players heading into the locker room. Good D, Uatua getting up on Webster Chan. And Negus did a real good job there. He saw that there was going to be a mismatch, and he, would, he went looking for it. Eight on the shot clock, Brown. Now Watson gets up on him. Webster Chan late in the shot clock. Had to get it up. He lives in the final he seconds, Joe. Man, he did a great job of creating a closeout and took advantage of it. 
three second difference game clock shot clock FIBA rules so they're probably just going to try to run this one down as that clock will keep going after the made basket if it were to happen Grandy Glaze don't think that's the shot you want and you get a chance back here with the Rattlers Opong kick out Bryce floats it off the glass what a great ending for the Rattlers in that first half great ending and that was like a basketball gods jumped in there and said okay you're going to try to force your will on a three payback on the other end is an easy two or a tough two in that case this team is just oozing with confidence and they just stole the confidence from Niagara that entire half and right now it's Amy Otterbert alongside Negus Webster Chan Three returners on a championship team, but evaluate that first half. What did you see out there? Uh, we had a lot of good communication with our team. We have a good game strategy, and we're just sticking to it. I want to, I mean, you came out on fire, four for seven, 14 points. Uh, but I want to ask you about your rookie running the point guard, Rashawn Brown. Yeah. We play with a guy who it's his first pro experience. Yeah. Uh, what do you, how, how's he making it work, and what are you telling him out there? Uh, we just told him just be solid, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, it's his first pro game. And he, thinking about it a lot last night so we just told him just play solid everything will take care of itself but do the small things first your game will just come right to you well that's a great message for him because he's doing great yeah. thank you for your time good luck no in the problem. second half thank you. we'll go back to you jason Okay, I've been working like three jobs. Probably why I never see ya. Probably why I never have time for the fake friends that won't be ya. Oh God, I've been running now. Up early when the sun is out. Not setting out my own soul, but those real ones, they coming now. Oh look, who's reaching out? Old friends wanna feature now. They don't work, so they need it free. Ooh, you reaching out from the west side of that old town, but there's no show till I go down to the open mic to show love to the real ones they know now. Some of y'all don't know now. In a couple months, you gonna find out. Been blowing up from the underground and they stay Stepping on a landmine now, and he knows my time now. Coming up, I'm on a climb now. Everybody claim they've been bottom, but it's looking like they took a time out. Okay, Ooh. I'm working on a Wednesday, then up again the next day. So much so is popping, man. I skip him like he leg day. Kick it like I'm Pele. I never care what they say. Put myself on Spotify, so every day my payday. That realness, don't feel this, but I've been sick. That illness, I've been fresh like Will Smith since 94, man. I built this. Stressed out, X out. Missed calls from my ex now, but I'm staying focused. In the lab, baby, I don't need your cause or your text now God say the boy blessed now Who am I to say Rondo? And the way that I sell six, they been calling me Rondo 23 in my prondo, finna ball like Lonzo Go and tell everybody talking stage Better be in that convo, uh It was a Saturday Chris was a good dad His water practices not so much. Hey, Chris. Hey, Culligan. Got a water pitcher for the fam. Pretty safe, huh? Uh, well, basic water pitchers are passable. Whereas a Culligan reverse osmosis system can reduce lead, arsenic, pesticide runoff. You realize these have filters? Chris, pour it out. It's not going fast enough. Just, just done with that. When your water's right, so is your world. I wrote that. Most of our clients who come through our door and who are suffering from mental illness, they're feeling a sense of despair and a longing for help. Often, insurance companies are denying disability claims on the basis that there's insufficient medical evidence. We've represented hundreds of clients who suffer from anxiety or depression. We fight for our clients' right to receive the compensation they deserve. If you've been denied long-term disability, don't give up. We can help. Your long-term disability firm, Kotak Law. It's time to rep your CEBL pride, Canada. Exclusive New Era merchandise is now available on CEBL.ca. Buy your favorite hats, replica jerseys, t-shirts, hoodies, and more. Welcome to our game. River Lions fans, right now you can get 12% off 2021 season tickets by placing your $50 deposit before August 9th, 2020. Visit riverlions.ca and take advantage of this exclusive summer series offer. Welcome to a new basketball experience.
Antlers fans, right now you can get 12% off 2021 season tickets by placing your $50 deposit before August 9th, 2020. Visit therattlers.ca and take advantage of this exclusive summer series offer. Welcome to a new basketball experience. So we're about ready to get going here. The first game of this 2020 Summer Series. And we are underway. Here's Mullings, and we get our first points of the contest as he drove right to the rack. Here's Notice, he gets stripped. Trey Bell Hayes driving, and he makes the floater go. Notice for Hamilton. Notice, little Euro stick. Blasts it in, and he'll go to the line. Guillaume Bucard now on the drive. Bucard gets the bucket. Settled this, after this media timeout. The veteran Tyrone Watson into the contest. His first okay. appearance in this contest. A All tip right. there by Mukama. He's going to take it to the rack. Uncontested jam. Oh, the alley and the oop. Nice feed, Teresa. And here's Guy Bucard. Here's Robertson. Stops. Looking to pop a three. Sports player. One of our developmental players in this tournament who's out there with a big play. With two up, gets it to Glaze. Glaze with a throwdown. Kick out of it in the corner, wide open. Look for Anderson. Skilled player. We'll see what he can do in this tournament. So if you notice the situation now, because we're going into the Elam time, there's nobody lined up beside him because we're going into a technical timeout Maybe. here. They swing it. Johnson drains a three. Stayed long was, and anticipated the shot. And Weber. Good start here in Elam for Hamilton. Trey Bell Hayes. Little crossover. Klassen, he's open. And Klassen with a three. Shuffle it in the corner. Johnson, another three. From the corner, Robertson. And, and makes a great read. Whoa. Here's Mullings, though, and Mullings ends the game. A valiant effort from Hamilton, but in the end, Niagara, they win this one in Elam. So we're about ready to get going here. The first game of this 2020 what an impressive Summer Series. First half there underway. by the Here's Rattlers. Mullings, Did an absolutely great job the finishing the, the second right quarter the on a 9-0 run and outscoring Niagara 22-11. Some big numbers, big stats on the on the board here, but the one that just jumps at me, Jason, is the 61% from the field, from the two-point area, and that's layups. Those those haven't been long twos. They've been layups because they've been able to create and get to the middle. An impressive performance. And then you've got a, a rookie professional player in his debut dropping nine points and having a plus-minus of 16. Like this is exciting stuff to see somebody with that type of confidence. And this this is one of those highlights we talk about. You know the benefit of youth sports. Yep. The fact that Rashawn went to Manitoba, finished his career there, had a chance of being the man, and knows how to be the man. This is an absolutely impressive half. And then the shooting, the three-point shooting, Negus Webster Chan hitting four in a row. Real good, real good half by Saskatchewan and surprised a lot of people. Well, let's talk about Rashawn Brown. He's played at New Mexico State under Marvin Menzies, played with Pascal Siakam, you know, redshirted the freshman season. Then he ends up transferring to a D2 school and then ends up coming back to Manitoba. Right. And I mean, when you look down and you see University of Manitoba beside a pro player's name, you, you got to wonder, like, oh, like, is this a thing that we're going to see going forward? But when you see what can be provided here in you sports and players start to understand of, you know, what's the end goal? Is your end goal playing professional basketball? You need to put yourself in the best position possible in order to get the skills needed to do that. And Rashawn Brown definitely did that by coming home. No, no question his part. A great decision. And he's always probably had that game in him. He just needed it somewhere to flourish. And he knew it. He just had to prove it to everybody else that he can do it. And his great year last year at Manitoba has really helped him in this camp. Talking to Chad Jacobson, and one of the questions I asked him was, who in your camp surprised you the most? And he said, Rashawn Brown's even better than I thought. And I said, he said, and we played against him when I was helping out the University of Saskatchewan. Yeah. So that's impressive stuff. But And his leadership, he made some reads out there. He knew that they were switching, certain guys were switching on ball screens. And he wanted a certain uh, situation where he can get that read. And, uh, you know, you have to add in the fact he got to learn under Justice Allen 
out at University of Manitoba, and Justice now is playing overseas professionally. This isn't just like a random thing. This is what is happening here in Canada in post-secondary education. Well, and, and the opportunity to get him out here, not just as a youth sport, but as a professional. Absolutely. And then on the other end, you got, you know, Eamon Uatua, yep. who's out there playing against them. Impressive stuff, and it talks to him just about the training, the quality of training. And what the CEBL is all about. And talking about the CEBL, Amy Audibert got to sit down with the commissioner, and here's her interview with Mike Morreale. One of the big talking points leading into the summer series has been the Canadian talent, and the amount and the quality has gone right up. I'm really excited, but why do you think some of our best basketball players are coming home to play? Well, last year, you know, we had a, we had the kind of proof of concept phase. Uh, we had a tremendous group of basketball players that played, no doubt about it. Many, many who are, are still playing here this year. But we started to see, you know, new agents, new players, higher name guys, just knocking on the door. And you know, we added about 75 new players this year. We have, you know, over a dozen uh, senior men's national team players. We have uh, guys from all over the G League, from all from NCAA to U Sport, etc. And the quality of coaching's gone up. The quality of players has gone up. And I think we proved to them, oh, these guys are kind of legit here. And you know, some of it is is good karma and silver linings amidst everything that was going on. So all of our best players were home already in March where they wouldn't have been home till mid-May or even into June. And they weren't going back anywhere else, so we kind of had a really captive audience. And it's worked almost as, as we scripted it. And I, I'm really happy about that. And, and I really can't wait for those guys to return next year and get a feel for the whole experience, right? From their home markets and the whole, the whole shoot and match. And, Let's start here and get, get it off the ground and get it going, and then we'll, we'll take the next steps from there. Earlier on today, uh, put your hand up. You know, how many of you guys have buddies that are playing basketball right now? It ain't happening. So this is like the platform, and I'm proud that it's a Canadian platform sprinkled in with some top international players. Uh, you know, they're showcasing not only what they do on the court, but how to do it safely and effectively. And I think we're going to be uh, someone that, people are able to go to from not only a pro sports level, but more importantly from an amateur sport, a minor sport level and say, how do we pull this off? Because there's thousands of young kids that need to play and want to play basketball. So many people have put in so much work to get this going. And right now we're gonna welcome back in Amy Otterbert who's with rookie head coach but didn't look like a rookie in that first half chad jacobson of the saskatchewan rattlers well right now and i'm not surprised that they're hitting those shots we just got to keep working for them I'm told that coaches are never really fully satisfied. You know Niagara's going to Now on the other side of things, Joe, if you're Niagara, with that first half you just put up there only 39 points after yesterday's game, you know, what kind of adjustments can you see coming into this third quarter? Well, I think you gotta stop thinking about yesterday. And you gotta you gotta get your head right here if you're Niagara, and you gotta say on defense, the first thing you gotta do is stop the ball. They're just getting beat off the dribble and that just creating a, a complete disaster for them defensively offensively they're best when they pass the basketball and not having trey bell haynes in there who's a huge part of that yeah it had an effect and it had a major effect and early in a series like that it's going to show but they've got a lot of veteran leadership that they've got to get through that yeah i mean defensively speaking that's obviously where you need to stop i mean the other team put up 50 points this is an Niagara squad that averaged about 105 last year they're going to be able to score the ball eventually but as you mentioned you need to be able to stop these guys and when you look at the halftime box score it's negus webster chan rashawn brown who did it in limited minutes and other than that you got kevin bracy davis the importer put up eight shots so i mean you should be able to kind of tailor your defense to those players am i right yeah, absolutely. Now let's look at the flip side of it. 
Niagara strength transition, moving the basketball. Why haven't they been able to do it? Saskatchewan's getting back, getting in the lanes, and Saskatchewan's controlling the ball. And because they're controlling the ball, they don't need the help from other guys. So even some of the baskets Niagara did score were tough baskets on good defense. And sometimes as a coach, as long as you're playing in the system, you're playing good defense, sometimes you recognize, okay, that's just a better shot than where we were defensively. But I'm impressed with their offense and really impressed with their defensive shell. Yeah, and one of your keys to the game was gang rebounding for the River Lions. They are currently minus four on the glass. Another thing that you did mention, the fact that the Rattlers are the home team, they are on that side of the floor where defensively in the, f in the first half and the second quarter especially, they were, be able to, they were able to help their guys on the floor that much more. And you know what? What they, what they are doing is they are talking. You're absolutely right. Their bench is involved, and that's engaged. We're, when you're talking off the bench, you, it's hard to help anybody offensively because yep. that's a skill. Yep. But defensively are, is rules. And you, everybody on your team, can make your defense better by just reminding guys or they know what the player can do and just giving out a quick scum report. And that's what they did. There was just a pile of juice over there and energy and they had much more energy than Niagara did and it showed. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the one thing that coaches always say, you know, go on the bench and think about it, but there's a lot to that because when you're on the bench, you see the game from a different angle. And if you use that opportunity to be able to help your teammates on the floor, that's more than any help you can do on the floor half the time. Just a little bit of advice there for the kids out there, Joe. I know you're always thinking about the next generation. And Daniel Mullings, one of the young guns in the CEVL, tore up the Israeli National League last year, has been a little quiet here today, playing his second game in as many days. Pinson. Working the point, kick back out, and this is somebody we didn't see a lot of, Sam Mulder, after those two quick fouls in the game. Yeah, victim of two fouls. There's Robertson getting to the rim, and this is another thing for Sask. Yeah. Th they haven't played game action like this. How are they going to come out in this third quarter? How are the legs going to be? Yeah, good reversal, good take. Niagara just did a little bit of what Saskatchewan was doing earlier. Williams working it around Webster Chan. Onto the wing, Tracy Davis can't get it to go. Muldrow is full of energy out there after sitting pretty much the entire second quarter and second half of that first quarter. And Saskatchewan run right after Sam on that. Oh, Bucard, the cardinal sin of jumping before knowing where you're going with it. Webster Chan dropping a dime in transition, no good. Jose to Williams. Eight on the shot clock, Webster Chan. Oh, great look down low. Williams kick out, Bracey Davis got to hit it. Yeah, Niagara's lucky on that series right there. Too many guys daring people to shoot, too much looking. Daniel Mullins, Pinson, Muldrow, he hit a couple in the early going. Big Sam can do that from and range. That's, that's a good situation of knowing who you're playing with. Dorian had the three, but Siam Sam was hot. One more pass. Ah, so just a little off a of target there. Webster Chan had to haul it in. Ose, mid-range game, no good. Sask has come out cold here to start the third. Robinson. Good defense by Saskatchewan, two on the ball. Robertson picks up the foul there to slow everybody up. Yeah, like I said, great job there by Saskatchewan on team defense. Got their hands in the lanes and good tip. Good tip, good deflection. Results in a run, nice run out. Just over two minutes into the third quarter, a six point lead for the defending CEBL champion, Saskatchewan Rattlers. Oh, almost lost it. Almost bailed out by a foul. Bracey Davis just all over the place, and it results in two. Wow. Every, every, every roll, every move went the right way there. Hard. Kick out. Muldrow. Close out by Taylor because Muldrow got it going from range. Big Sam looking a little fresh after some time on the bench there in the first half. 
Yeah, and Sam can do a lot from the top of the key like that. He's a good passer from there, shooter. So now you have to play him straight up. Oh, say splitting the D once again, taking it hard. Bracey Davis has it poked away by Pinson. We got numbers for the River Lions. Bucard fires it. Robertson back to Bucard. This would be big for Niagara, but no good. They're still stuck six. Webster Chan. Step back, Webster Chan. Takes him a while to get warmed up, I find. Couple that was shots. A, that was a tough shot. That was a tough one. Bowling's lost it, got it back. Yeah, earlier you said in that second quarter, you talked about guys getting a little tired. It's almost like right now, either the, ad the adrenaline, the energy, but we got some tired bodies on the floor. On cue come the reserves. Delane Price and Robinson Opong, along with Shane Oseyande. Card. He took a pong down there in the first half as well. You hear Coach Jacobson say, stay down. But Bucard couldn't get it to go anyways. And that was great defense. He did stay down. He held his ground, did a nice job of staying there. Turnover back the other way. Foul called. A yeah, big transition from Saskatchewan because I thought Niagara did a nice job of getting the steal, getting up to court, but they're not watching for the pass. Bad turnover, turns down the other end. This is what Niagara did in the first half that got them in trouble. Hey, Joe, when I showed up here today, got myself a little uh, CEBL pullover, and you can also get yourself some gear. You can wear the latest gear exclusively from New Era, the official merchandise partner of the CEBL. Visit the store at cebl.ca to pick up your favorite team gear. My daughter loves the Blackjacks. I myself a little partial towards the Rattlers, but if I could get a full kit, probably the Honey Badgers pinstripes. You'll take a box of that, of anything. Absolutely, <laughs> hey man. Hey, this is the first time I've been able to put on a, a sports jacket and a collared shirt in about four and a half months. So that CEBL gear could have got me through the last five months. But you that can was pick your COVID it up. gear. Exactly, but you could pick it up as well. Some great caps there, thanks to New Era. And the 2021 CEBL season ticket drive started yesterday. It will run throughout the entire CEBL summer series. Visit riverlions.ca or rattlers.ca. $50 deposit to secure your 21 season tickets. Purchase your season tickets completely by the end of the summer series. Receive a 12% discount. Got all that in without missing a play. And from downtown, thank you, Kemi Osei. He waited for me to hit the three. Yeah, but I'm going to say thank you, Shane Osiende, who made that great save out of bounds and was going to eat the ball if he couldn't find his teammate. That's where it started. Osiende making championship-level plays. He has a title with this squad. He and two of his teammates back for the Rattlers and the lead is back up to 11. Sask getting it done. Bowling's gonna have to yank it, airs it out. That is a shot clock violation. The Rattlers absolutely loving life right now. Two spectacular defensive possessions in a row for Saskatchewan. They are controlling the ball, controlling movement, rebounding. Sean Brown back in the game for the Rattlers. Turns it over. Transition, Edgem. Basket while getting fouled, going to the line looking for the three-point play. One of the few times Niagara's had an opportunity to run with advantage. Saskatchewan's done a good job up to that point. And that was a nice inside screen, too, that let Ryan get the position in there. Our media timeout time here midway through the third quarter. We'll be back to the Meridian Center with the remainder of the third quarter after a short break.
Follow the Niagara River Lions on social media right now to get the latest news, updates, and behind-the-scenes access that the River Lions have to offer. Follow the Saskatchewan Rattlers on social media right now to get the latest news, updates, and behind-the-scenes access that the defending champion Rattlers have to offer. We're back. A nine-point lead for the Rattlers. Sam Muldrow has been big for the River Lions. Coming back after some foul trouble. And the River Lions have also been able to close the rebounding margin, but have not been able to get back to within one possession. And the Rattlers have really had their way here this afternoon. Yeah, the Rattlers have done a nice job. Every time so far in this third quarter where Niagara's made a run, they just answered it and played solid defense. And Toyota, the official Saskatchewan Rattlers game day partner, probably having a good time back in Sask. A little watch party maybe, maybe at Ends Toyota if they're open on a Sunday. It's always interesting to see how teams come out after a timeout, if they're going to do anything different defensively or offensively. This is a big moment of the game, the final half of the third quarter. Who can carry Uncle Mo into the fourth? They need that momentum. Tough pass, Mullings to Watson, but Watson pulls it in. Kick back out. Bucard into the lane. A little bit of contact, no whistle. Brown back the other way. Nice drop off, Bracey Davis. You hear the river line screaming out, stop ball, it's not happening. One team misses in contact, one team scores in contact. The New Mexico State connection, Mullings to Watson, kick out three, no good from Ryan Anderson. Ooh, Rashawn Brown bringing a little street to the Meridian Center. Bracey I, Davis I there talked, out. I said Freddie Brown earlier, that's slick Watts on that one. <laughs> Don't. Oh, Mullings just forcing it. I can't hear him, nothing. Foul called on Brown. Welcome to the pros, kid. It's not all threes and lay, layups. You gotta learn the little intric intricacies of the refereeing as well. Yeah. Niagara's doing a real good job of making it real tough. Watson. Yes, now I can. Oh, Mullings off the side of the backboard. He is not getting any whistles his way, that's for sure. Ooh, Brown with a ugly pass gets bailed out by his teammates. Wow, Oseande with the tip in. The Rattlers are really getting everything to go their way. And you know what? And the Rattlers are playing through contact. They're not looking for the whistle. You said earlier, you know, someone's looking for a whistle. Well, the Rattlers aren't. They're playing through the contact and just going and finishing. Bowling's just saying to the officials, he's holding me every time. Finally got the whistle that he was looking for there. Anderson down low to Watson, mouse in the house. He gets Webster Chan, obviously has the length, but gives up some of the width that Watson carries around with him. Yeah, and Tyrone's really good going over the left shoulder. And if you watch him with his dribbles, he pounds it and always looking because it, he's not just going in there to score, he's going in there to feed somebody. Watson shooting free throws here. Tyrone's one of the few professionals who's played his whole career in Canada. I've known him since he's been about six or seven years old playing basketball, and he was a heck of a football player, too. I heard some stories that uh, he and uh, his coach used to go at it a bit on the gridiron. I'll tell you, Tyrone made his coach a much better athlete. <laughs> iron sharpens iron, as they say. And now Victor Razzo gets to coach his childhood friend, Tyrone Watson, here 
Great drop off from Webster Chan. Foul called. Ooh, and so a great drop Vincent. off because of the penetration and because they're shooting the three well. Niagara's not covering down with everybody. So now the Rattlers are doing a great job of finding the open man in those short pass areas. And Shane Osiende is very, very good around the basket with great hands. Short arms, the first, Osiande, one of the late additions to this squad. Toronto native, played at the University of Saskatchewan. Got the second one to go. Haven't seen Chris Joseph at all today, along with Carl Brown, the third. Two key players for the Rattlers. Still, they find themselves up 11. They're doing a great job right now, Saskatchewan, of playing selfless basketball. So we got a correction on that out of bounds situation. The problem was the official who corrected it said the wrong team color. So Coach Jacobson said, hold on a second. So there's two guys in the gym that are colorblind. <laughs> Active hands and it goes off Muldrow out of bounds. The Rattlers are just making the breaks go their way. And there's a situation where when someone's kicking out to you, you got to be visible. In some cases, it doesn't have to be the three point line. It's not a wall. Sam Muldrow could flash to the rim and get that ball just as easy. Price. Watson d and him up. Good hands, Tyrone Watson. Sneaking up on the two-minute mark here of the third quarter. No good from range from Muldrow. Brown fakes it, gets it over to Chan. Webster Chan. Looks like he got his elbow touched a bit there on the pull-up. Back the other way, Anderson. Chan may have gotten a piece of that. Opon. Rattlers are definitely the ones with fresher legs right now. The River Lions played just 24 hours ago, Joe. Yeah, but and Robson Opong on there knew who was bringing the ball up the court. You notice that he didn't handle that as a regular transition situation. He sprinted up to the three-point line to guard Ryan Henderson 20 feet away from the basket. Again on Pinson. Some reinforcements coming in for both sides. Pinson beside himself right now, trying to understand what the officials are calling out there. He's gotten a couple of whistles going against him the last two trips down the floor. Yeah, and sometimes when things aren't going for you, you can't get that, you can't let your own frustration take you out of the game. And the turnover possibly, the fouls you accumulates, and all of a sudden you haven't played for a long time. You got to get over that. And that's that's part of the growth here right now. And that's something you haven't, you know, a lot of these guys haven't competed like this for a while. The Rattlers enjoying themselves in their first game of the CEBL Summer Series have been able to maintain a double-digit lead through the majority of this game. A reminder, we have the Elam ending coming up in the final four minutes of regulation. And the River Lions right now really got to be looking at that four-minute mark to see they need to get as close as they can heading into that. Watson. As you said, going over that left shoulder, got it to go. He's a mismatch nightmare right now. Well, on this team, it's real difficult because you've got Sam Muldrow on the court. So you, this is a team with not a lot of post players in Saskatchewan, but they're all 6'7", six, 6'6", six, six, and they're great in that they can switch everywhere. And great defense there by Watson, but Webster Chan gets it back, hits the three, and has something to say to tie. And it's a second chance three. And that's where Saskatchewan's been so good at giving themselves second chance opportunities and finishing it off with a three point shot. Muldrow looking to pass out of that top of the three positioning there. Bucard set back by Bracey Davis, saves it, but it goes the way of the Rattlers. Jumping in for the foul is Anderson. 
And that's a good foul when you're not in the bonus situation. But when you're in the penalty situation, it's not a very good foul. And the difference between that and that being an unsportsmanlike is he made an attempt at the ball and he was in front of the ball. I just, I'm so impressed with Rashawn, Rashawn Brown. Puts a pair. The Rattlers in control of this game. 12 seconds to go here in the third quarter. River Lions need to get something good. Three to go, Mullings. Hard to the hole for two, much needed for the River Lions. But it is a 13 point lead for the defending champs. Stay with us, we'll be back to St. Catharines for fourth quarter action. Elam ending is upon us, and they take the timeout to set the target score. up into the air, gets it to go! Not there, Bucard in the corner for three. Neo Bucard at the buzzer, drains it, and the Niagara River Lions get out of here with a 93-92 victory. Fourth quarter action brought to you by Ward One Studios. Ward One Studios, the national video partner of the CEBL. They have done an outstanding job last year, followed along the Guelph Nighthawks and put together a great little mini documentary over CEBL championship weekend. And with everything that has been condensed here for the summer series, Ward One has done an amazing job with a lot of the video features and graphics and everything that goes into a broadcast. They've done an outstanding job here as we welcome you back in for the fourth quarter. 68-55, the defending champion Sask Saskatchewan Rattlers have done a great job holding the River Lions to just 55 points through three quarters. Again, the River Lions without Trey Bell Haynes, but you have to give it to the Rattlers defense. They're playing like champions. They're playing like they've got the belt, and they've played real hard and smart the entire three quarters. Again, we have the Elam ending coming up in the final four minutes of this quarter, so the first six minutes are going to be extremely important in starting it up. It's Kenny Edgem putting in that work in the lane. Yeah, good ball movement, good set to come out of that timeout. And he just kept balance inside there. Eh? He knew that there was guys there. He just kept himself balanced. Rattlers with the rock. Story. River Lions with the rock. Rattlers with the lead. Sam Muldrow with the three. And once again, it's nothing but net. Now he's been their best offensive weapon right there. Say up top, Taylor Edgem looking for Bracey Davis off the screen. Great 
look. Pocket pass down low to Taylor for two. And they do a good job of running that stagger, and they stayed real patient with it. Niagara standing up on defense, not getting much help from the weak side. A little pull of the jersey goes uncalled. Mullings from downtown. It's a good sign for the River Lions if he can get it going. The River Lions need to play a little bit of defense on the basketball here, need some defensive stops if they want to get in this game. Gracie Davis, Edgem. Once again, didn't know he had it in him. But what a great tease. He got Tyrone Watson to step forward before he used the dribble. Watson. And uh, head coach Victor Rasso over there, not liking what he's seeing from his squad. Hand off to Webster Chan. Tough pass, Mullings picks it off. Yeah, and that's where Sam Muldrow's length came into play on that double team. Because he's so long, you can't go over him, so you have to get around him. Good cover down there by Daniel Mullings. Just over two minutes gone in the fourth. The lead's still at 13. Cassius Robertson had the hot hand yesterday, has not been able to replicate it here this afternoon. Right now, Niagara's running lots of one and done offenses yeah. because there's no movement. They're just taking quick early threes and trying to get themselves back in the game that way. And they have to expend a lot of energy on defense. As the Rattlers are working it down every chance they got. And they're gonna get it back. No foul called three on the shot clock. Rattlers ball. Yeah, good solid defense there. Moving your feet, Guillaume. Bracey Davis was trying to draw a charge, draw a foul there, and, and Guillaume did a nice Ricard did a real nice job. Tad Jacobson's calling a timeout, wants to talk things over here with just three seconds left on the shot clock, up 13. And when you're talking about each team playing six games over this stretch. I mean, at some point you got one win in your pocket if you're the River Lions. You're playing undermanned here today. Get a day off tomorrow. How much strategy do you put into saving your guys in a situation like this? Wins are all, all the wins are the same. So, you know, if, if you're thinking if an injury is a situation where you can get two days to get them back, then that's huge. The Rattlers' but, next broadcast, sorry, Joe, is July 28th at 7.30 p.m., while the River Lions play also on July 28th at 5 p.m. Those are, like you had mentioned, every game so important for any of these teams. Yeah, and, and the hard part of it is when you're dealing with injuries, rest becomes so important because this game will affect the next game. Again, such a unique season here with everything that's gone on. Such a great hybrid of a FIBA slash NCAA tournament slash the basketball tournament. So three on the shot clock. And so after a timeout and with a good shooter inbounding the ball. Didn't have time to get it back to him. Well, uh, that's one of those plays that that could possibly be a change that the River Lions needed. But as you had mentioned, they need to get more ball movement on the offensive end. Hand off to Mullings. And they called Robertson on the moving screen after the handoff. That's the second one they've got today on the moving screen. Um, Niagara, but you got to hold your ground. That's just good defense causing that you to causing you to move. Edge Oceande. Bowlings and Brown just having a battle off the ball at the point guard spot. Yeah, Edgem offensive foul. But you notice how Saskatchewan got played out of the high post there, and they're playing through 
not their vets like Shane Osiende, but they're trying to attack Sam Muldrow at the high post. So Sam's halfway to nowhere. He's not on the ball, because if he's on the ball, they're going to drive by him. So he's got to lay back a little bit. Now it makes Shane a very good passer. It's a good idea and great strategy by Saskatchewan. Robertson with the ball. Bucard, he's been quiet today. No good. Watson with the save. Osei comes out with it. Takes it hard and gets it to go. So great defense leads to the kick out, forces a tough shot. Mullings, back cut. Called for the block. Good back cut there, good, good, see, good read by Sam Muldrow. But this defense by Saskatchewan, what they've done a real good job is, is scouting personnel. They're coming off of Niagara's non-shooters and playing in the middle as much as they can. They have stuck to their personnel, they know their personnel, and therefore making the middle of the defense really, really difficult to get through. Saskatchewan looking for a little sleeper play guy down here at the corner. Nobody's picked them up yet. Have no idea. Brown. Calling out for the screen. Oceande. Set it for him. Bracey Davis now. Poked away by the River Lions. They got numbers if they get out and running. Robertson had some lift in that one. Good sign for the River Lions. He cashes from downtown. Yeah, good defense to offense play there. Still an 11 point lead for the Rattlers. They have been in control since the midway point of the first quarter. Oh, that's deep. Transition again, Mullings chases it down. Drops it off, Bucard, lots of contact, no whistle. And that's a frustration foul there. You hear Coach Rasso say, I got three timeouts left, I'm gonna take one of those with immediate timeout right around the corner as well. Smart move there to get his guys a breather. Mullings frustration foul I think also had to do energy level seems to be dropping. Yeah, and then in this case here, it's a use it or lose it timeout. So this is important and, and get these guys under, I'll get them a little bit rested here. But I think you got to get through situations like that. There's contact underneath the rim on that last play. You can't get frustrated. You got to play through it. You got to keep playing through it if you're Niagara. On the other end here, if you're Saskatchewan, you want to keep doing what you're doing. You want to take this into Elam time. You want to, right now, you're going to use this time to try to lengthen your lead until you get to Elam time. So right now, we're right where we started, the start of the second half. So Coach Jacobson's gonna tell his guys, okay, we got a minute and a half here. Let's win this next minute and a half. Let's make sure going into this, we've won that last minute and a half, building our momentum, because this is something new that Saskatchewan hasn't seen. Really like what I saw to Ryan Anderson down there while Victor Raza was talking with his coaching staff. Ryan Anderson was pointing at the scoreboard probably saying the same sort of thing you were saying hey we're in a different situation here we we got to get ourselves the four minute mark in the best possible striking position that we can get to good leadership there from anderson one of the many veterans on this river lions squad rattlers coming out of their timeout with price webster chan bracy davis who has played a ton of minutes here ose and oseande and Osei with his handle has impressed me the most yeah. is that he's been able to split double teams and play downhill when he has to. Little defense, little change of defense here by Niagara going 1-3-1. One, one. It went off of Edgem out of bounds. Ryan Edgem that is, sorry I should specify. The, the, the River Lions Edgem. Oseande, oh yeah, so all one of the, kinds of contact there. So one of the problems when you switch defense and all of a sudden switching back, if you don't communicate to each other, what happened there, we had, we had, they had a switch 
and all of a sudden, great matchup for, for Saskatchewan, and they found it right on the first pass. Five fouls on Cassius Robertson. And he seemed, he seemed to be surprised, not realizing that he may have had four. Just by looking at it there. This is, you know, early in these turn, in these series, what you have to do is communication becomes key. Communication, talking on screens, talking in situations. Because this is new to everybody. Midway point of the fourth quarter. Pinson to Bucard. Watson back up top to Pinson. Gracie Davis called for the clutch and grab away from the ball. That was a good foul for Bracey Davis, just because right now what you want to do is you don't want to give them any momentum. And because you got a couple fouls to give getting to the Elam time, not a bad decision. Bowlings drive, kick to the corner. No good, one and done once again for the River Lions. The Rattlers getting it done on the defensive glass. Jose went the opposite way of the screen and drew the foul long two. That's, oh, three shots. And that's just a, like Kenny o, Kemi Osei has been out. Okay, so now after Kemi puts us in, put them in a situation for three shots, we're getting close to Elam time. And Elam time will start with the first stoppage of play after under four minutes. And in the Elam time, nine points is added on to the lead score, and that's the target that we're going to play till. And we're going to, uh, so a couple things will happen. Uh, the, the rules now, we adopt the FIBA last two minute rules. So things will happen in there that team scored on. If you call a timeout, you can get a substitution. After a timeout, then you can bring the ball to center court. After a scored, after you're scored upon, um, you, we talked about the substitution. Um, the other one is the official. We saw this yesterday. The official has to wave his arm telling you that you can't put your hands, you can't reach in on out of bounds, side out of bounds, or baseline out of bounds. And a foul off the ball before it's administered will be an unsportsmanlike call. So those are th FIBA rules, the last two minutes of FIBA rules that we're implementing in Elam time. So Elam time would start in the first stoppage under four minutes. 4.20 left here in the fourth quarter. Mullings, Anderson. Henson threads the needle to edge him. Another one and done. The Rattlers having their way defensively. Again, first stoppage. We will get an Elam time. Kick out. Webster Chan. Negus. Webster Chan for his. Friends back in Scarborough. Mullings back the other way. Tough take. Yeah. Trading baskets right now, but the Rattlers really in control of this one. They'll take a three for a two any day. Ose. Trying to get into the post. Oseyande. Foul called. There's our first whistle. And that let's let's get joined now by by Amy Otterberg to take us through what we can see in the final minutes here. Thanks, Jason. Something to certainly look for. There are literally a handful of guys that have actually used the Elam ending in a basketball game. I had the chance to catch up with one of them over training camp, and that was Jonathan Arledge with the Guelph Nighthawks, and he played in the TBT two years ago. That tournament also uses the Elam ending. And, and I asked him his experience on it, and he said, you know, it's really fun and exciting, but something, he made a great point, something to always remember is to stick to your game plan and your philosophies of your team because you can easily lose your mind chasing that target score. So that's a great point from Jonathan. Really curious to see how this one turns out. Yeah, I mean, Amy, thank you very much. And I found that yesterday watching from home, Joe, was the fact that once there is a score out there for people 
to aim at, they do play differently. Well, what happens is you, with the clock being shut off, you should you should be playing at your best. Like you're not the clock shouldn't be forcing you how to play. There won't be stuff like hack a shacks and stuff of that nature. So you should be playing more of your regular basketball, and in many cases, more with your regular players. So there's not it's not a time to bring players off the court that you don't trust. Before we get that, I want to go back to the last time out at 5:35, and leading into Elam time, and we looked at the scoreboard and we said this is a big timeout because coach is going to say let's win that last 135. Not only does Saskatchewan win that 135, they added seven, eight points to it, and now you've got an Elam score that's going to be set at 95. Yep. And so all of a sudden now you've got a huge run to put Niagara in to get this thing, and almost impossible, but nothing's impossible with the Elam score. No, and I mean, there's there's one way to look at it. Obviously, the Elam ending provides you know a, a great ending to a close game, but also sets yourself up for we're probably going to see a great run in some game in this in this series i mean right now for example it would have to be a 28 to 8 run for niagara to pull out this win but at some point over these two weeks we're going to see something special and this is all of, to make a run you got to stop teams yes it's and we, we all get caught up in the scoring yep. you have to stop teams if you're going to make a run in elam's time as as you so eloquently put it last year in our time working together defensive runs stringing together stops. I'll tell you this, River Lions have not been able to do that today. The Rattlers have done an outstanding job of that, holding Niagara to just 67 points in this one. Mullings in the post, getting to work, gets it to go. Again, you'll see the backboards are lit up. To let everybody know, we're in Elam time. So I like this idea. Niagara's actually changed their defense a little bit, trying to Put, trying to put Saskatchewan in a situation where they're thinking a little bit. But Bracey Davis has just been steady. Played a huge amount of minutes as Bracey Davis. Almost the entire game. Nice look down low, Mullings to edge him. One thing you're going to find with Elam time is if you've got a bit of a lead, you're not going to waste your fourth and fifth foul in some cases. So Ossie there, you noticed he wanted no part of taking care of, of being in a foul situation. Ducard, Dina Bose. No good. Once again, Oseyande offensive rebound called for the foul. So we look at that, and Niagara leaves a dare for a shot. Saskatchewan takes it, but if you're not going to put your body on somebody, you're, any rebound is just going to be a mistake. You've got to put your DNA on everyone. Oseyande was so crucial as a glue guy, as a rebounder, as somebody who did all the dirty work for them last year in that run to the CEBL championship. No surprise what he's been able to provide here in this game. Yeah, and he's been, he came into camp late. So that's pretty impressive, but he just he just balls when he plays. He just goes hard and he plays one way. Oh, and immediately gave it back. No whistle. Transition. Turnover. This is not the River Lions day. Sask has had their way from the beginning to the end. The Rattlers bench is feeling it right now. Yeah, I think Saskatchewan has stolen Niagara's confidence the entire day. No good. Once again, one and done. The Rattlers defensive rebounding has been their calling card. And this one, they're just four points away from picking up their first win of the summer series. Oh, safe, feeling it. No good. Mullings brings it down. End to end, Daniel Mullings. He'll head to the line looking for two from the charity strike. Yeah, now, now Niagara's in a situation where we talk about those defensive runs. You don't put those in, you're in trouble. And this is what hurt you was in turnovers. That last turnover that Niagara had turns in two points down the other end. You can't turn the ball over in Elam time. You've got to play defense if you want to catch up. No good on the first. First one to 95. Game clock is off here in Elam ending. 
And if a team surpasses 95, 96, 97, they win the game, absolutely. But those that's important for the stats as we go along through the tournament. Yep. No good. And the Rattlers, a couple of buckets shy of taking this one. Webster Chan, 10 on the shot clock. Passes it off the leg of Price. Hits it back, but not even close on the attempt. Henson. And now it's Chad Jacobson who wants a timeout to talk things over. It probably has a little more to do with, he wants to be able to draw something up offensively. He just, the last couple times down the floor here for the Rattlers, it's been kind of helter-skelter just trying to get a ball up to the rim. Yeah, he probably noticed it was the only couple minutes or the only minute of this whole game where they've lost their focus a little bit. And I think that's a great timeout to use it. The fact that he brought two into Elam time was so important. I'm, I'm impressed with the fact that they are coming down the court looking for stuff like they're spacing the floor and they're looking to penetrate still. Now the only problem you'll get with the Elam time, the only problem that you'll get is you want to, you don't want to play not to lose. Yes. And so he wants to remind them, listen, we just need good offense. Don't look at the score. Let's worry about our offense. Don't worry about the score. Play solid defense, but let's go down the other end and score. And I think what happens if you get if you're leading and you start looking at the yep. score and all of a sudden it starts to get in your head, all of a sudden the rim gets a little bit smaller. That's what Niagara would like them to think, but right now I think when you look at these Rattlers, they're thinking that the, the rim is huge. It's almost a little harder when there is more of a disparity between the two teams when it comes to the score because it does change the way you do things. If it's a closer game, it's more of a shootout, got to D up, got to make your shots. Here, it's, it's a weird play on the mind for a lot of these guys, I think. But think of a natural game where the blowout is huge in this situation. If yes. this was a, all of a sudden now you've got stuff like stop your play where oh. we're fouling somebody. Absolutely. And all of a sudden your chance of winning, I think, becomes a whole lot less. Yep. This is a huge mountain to climb. But because of Elam, I think you've got a better chance to win than you do in regular basketball. Because yep. the, there's no time on you. Yep. Just got to execute, and that's exactly what Coach Jacobson wanted to do as he looks to pick up his first win as a professional head coach. Mulling stepping in, picking pockets. River Lions are going to keep it. Or sorry, I guess technically get it back. Yeah. And it looked like Niagara touched the ball out of bounds, but it was the it was the front court violation that the referee called there. Mullings. Drive, kick, corner three, Pinson. Did not have the legs underneath him there. Yeah, and on that corner three, one more pass gets Ryan Anderson a touch there. And that's what Niagara does very well. In that case, there's any. You can't miss a guy like Ryan Anderson if he's going to be open. Another timeout here. Again, 95 is that target score. And we have a second game coming up here today, Joe. A battle of the West. Fraser Valley taking on the Edmonton Stingers. Two very strong teams. Fraser Valley may be the dark horse of this tournament. Well, you know what, Kyle Julius has been around a little bit and coaching a bunch of different leagues and assembled a team of guys that he knows. So it's not like a brand new team. It's a it's a new team for him, but it's with old guys, guys that he knows and guys that he trusts. And I think that will be a huge factor because he wants them to play at a certain standard. Yes. And all those guys know what that standard is ahead of time. Edmonton Singers coached by Jermaine Small who led his team on a Cinderella run last year. Uh, you know, really, it was this Rattler squad that stopped the Stingers at any chance they got. I think the three losses uh, that Jermaine Small got as a, as a professional head coach all at the hands of these Rattlers. And I think what Edmonton brings is a team of, they people know their role, and they got some great, great Canadians, but I think they've got the two best imports who work together really well in Travis Daniel and Xavier Moon. Yeah, Xavier Moon is a player you want to see. If you haven't watched him play yet, make sure you stay tuned in. That game will be tipped off about 25 minutes after the conclusion of this one. But 
Still a lot up for grabs here in this game. Webster Chan called for the foul. When you're up big. in Elam time, <laughs> when you're up big, a foul's not a bad play. And force them to go to the free throw line and shoot two, particularly if you're fouling somebody who's not a very good shooter. Anderson's a good shooter. Because now you're not giving up a three, and you might be in a situation where you only give up one, and then you get another attempt down the other end. So this works out well even if he scores the second one because if they'll be willing to give up a point per possession. Down the stretch here, the River Lions have not helped themselves one bit from the free throw line, splitting their trips there consistently. Sean Brown, who was the hero for the Rattlers in the first half, cooled off here in the second half, out there running the point. Bracey Davis has an advantage on Mullings, but Mullings will D up anybody. Bracey Davis into the teeth. And that is a charge. Edgem stepping in to draw it. And that, and that last time out, Niagara decided we were going to show zone but play man on the first pass. And a little bit of confusion, just to try to set it in using that timeout as much on defense as, as you would think about as would on, on offense. Mullings onto the wing, into the corner. Bucard, drive. Price there to get a hand on it. Edgem gets it back, cashes the jumper. All right. Rattlers have become ice cold here on one the, of the offensive end. One of the problems, right, when you're playing a zone defense in a short period of time, you can never get caught in a situation where you're guarding no one. So here's a mis major mistake by Saskatchewan, fouling somebody on a rebound, letting them go down the court and get two shots. That you don't want. You want to make sure that you're working both teams in the bonus now. That really working the way of the River Lions. They gotta hit their free throws to get the first. Trey Bell Haynes again out of this game. He's out there right now talking to Dorian Pinson though, trying to give some advice and again, putting the free throws. And that's an 82% free throw yeah. shooter going to the line there. One of the best three point shooters in the league last year was Anderson. No good again, Rattlers. Coming up empty, and the River Lions are smelling blood in the water. They've still got a long way to go, but they're doing what they need to do. River Lions needed this, I don't know, about half hour ago? Well, you know what? They're building a little bit of confidence in it right now, and if the clock was running, you couldn't see this in regular time. The game would be over. This will allow, this will give you some hope. Turnover, Bracey Davis, three on two. Pull it back out, Osei. Price. The Rattlers just not running anything out there. Brown, six on the shot clock. Pull up, no good. Brought down by the River Lions. Bucard. Mullings. Lots of hands on the ball there. River Lions will get it back. They're still down 14. But you can see Niagara's a little tired. They got a good uh, turnover down the other end, but they didn't run with five. They ran with three. Guillaume, Bouchard, Guillaume Bucard is stopping at the three-point line looking for guys, and usually the River Lions are known to run with five guys. Wing three, Anderson no good. Mulling skying in for the putback. And that's the first time today that Daniel Mullings had an opportunity to be uh, an offensive player on a, on a rebound like that. Rattlers just looking for anything right now offensively. They go down, that's the man to go to, but Bucard with the block. Given right back. And if you, in Elam time, if you want to make a comeback, you can't turn the ball over. I'll say. 
almost a turnover. And on the shot clock. Basket, and you can count it going to the line looking for the three point play. Huge play. Big shot by Bracey Davis. I'm just still shocked that that got in. A Rainmaker underhand floater? That was something. Again, 95 is a target score. Going to need this free throw and one more bucket. Still two to go for the Rattlers. Card. Pinson. Floater no good. Out come the Rattlers. They just need a bucket. Osei. Pulls it back out, calling out the play. Gets it over to Brown. Bracey Davis, sorry, that's Bracey Davis. Back out, Osei from downtown. Kemi Osei sends the River Lions home. The Rattlers pick up their first win of the CEBL Summer Series. And a huge win and, you know, Game winner, Kenny Osei, he's done it all game long. He deserved to be the guy. He deserved to be the Elam guy at the end of this one. Super job by Saskatchewan. What a great game whistle to whistle for the defending CEBL champion, Saskatchewan Rattlers, the River Lions. Just could not get it done. They were really battling from behind this entire game. Interestingly enough, during the Elam ending portion, they started to get done what they needed to get done. But, you know, in the end, I mean, you cannot come from that type of uh, deficit. So let's look at this open, this ending basket here. We're in a situation right now. Saskatchewan comes down, moves the basketball, time running out. But if you look at Kenny, he turns around and he knows he's going to get this. He knows one more pass, I'm ready, I want it. And they only needed a two, but he'll take the three given the opportunity. It was a great game-winning bucket from Kemi Osei, but it's Rashawn Brown who is with Amy Otterbert for a little okay. post-game look back. Amy? Thank you, Jason. Rashawn, you're only going to have to answer this once. First professional career under the belt. How did it feel out there? Uh, it was good. There was a little bit of butterflies before that, but my teammates did a good job of hyping me up, making me feel like I was better than I was. So. That was the result. I think you were pretty good. Don't sell yourself short. I got to ask, obviously, it was a little sticky in the Elam ending, right? Yeah. What did you see out there, and what was the experience? I think it's just a big thing of uh, there's, there's a difference between playing to win and playing not to lose. I think we got a little bit complacent there and started playing to lo not to lose. I think we fixed that from now on, and we're a pretty solid team. You've had some experience playing against Coach J Chad Johnson. Today, you got to play for him, finally. What did you enjoy the most about that? I love playing for Coach Chad. He gives us freedom to go out and do uh, what we need to do, but at the same time, he also gives us that constructive criticism, and it's always things we can go out and fix early and really fast, so it helps. Rashawn, you certainly earned your ice today. We appreciate your time. We'll Thank go you. back to you, Jason. Thank you, Amy. Rashawn Brown, his first career Thanks, pro game. He gets his first career pro win. And Chad Jacobson, first career game as a head co professional head coach and gets the win. And a big win. You know, they came out here and they outworked Niagara the entire time and they stuck to their game plan. They knew their personnel. They had the advantage of having a scouting report and they used it to their advantage. And that's good coaching. That's good coaching and that's part of the series. And uh, I think that was a huge win. A lot of people probably don't expect it. I think Chad Coach Jacobson knows we're, we got the belt. We're coming in here. We're the champs. And they played like champions. They absolutely did. Great first game for the Rattlers. They're now 1-0 and while the River Lions drop to 1-1. One and one. I think what was great about the Rattlers as well, they've learned maybe how not to play in the Elam ending in that situation yeah. right there. Everybody's going to get some experience in this Elam ending. Being ahead, being yep. behind, close games, blowouts. Everybody's going to get this. This is all new experience for everyone. We saw a play yesterday in the Elam ending which was one thing you'll, you'll very rarely see. You never you always, on the free throw, you tell your guys, you got to box yeah. out, you got to box out. Well, when you're at the free throw line and it's the game-winning basket, J.B. Mukamba yep. didn't worry about boxing out. He went and he attacked the ball as soon as it touched the rim, which is legal in FIBA, and made a great play. He was on the losing side, 
But those of us that look at Elam time and, and appreciate FIBA basketball appreciate great plays like that. So we will get used to it. We will see some great things happen in it, but I'm happy we're using it. Game number three of the CEBL Summer Series is in the books. Game four, you don't have to wait long. Ten after four Eastern Standard Time. So that's uh, about 35 minutes from now. Make sure you stay tuned. We got Fraser Valley taking on the Edmonton Stingers. Should be an outstanding game. Stay with us. Signing off for Amy Audibert. I'm Jason Tom, Joe Rasso. We'll see you in about a half hour.